I'm Brian McCreeth at Symphony Hall with Song Jin Cho, the pianist who's back in Boston. After a few years, it turns out, that uh, you were here in 2020, just before everything got locked down for the pandemic. Song Jin Cho, thank you so much for a little bit of your time today. My pleasure. It's really great to be back. You did Prokofiev here for your BSO debut in 2020. And, and I just, you know, I, I wonder if you can reflect, if you look back at March 2020, how different a person are you now from at that point? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it was a totally different world back then. Uh, it was one of my last concerts before the pandemic. And I didn't expect something very <laughs> big before the pandemic. I mean, when I was in Boston, because no one could expect what is going to happen. But I, I knew or I felt that something is going to happen, but I didn't know what that is. So, yeah, I'm very grateful that I'm back here. And it is my third collaboration with Andres. So I'm really happy. Yeah, and, and I think you speak for a lot of us when you say that you, you couldn't imagine what was about to come in March of 2020. But we're glad you're, you're back now. And, um, and with Ravel, it's especially... Um, Wonderful to hear you play Ravel with the Boston Symphony. Tell me about the piano concerto in G. You know, you spent many years doing competitions, and, and that culminated with winning the Chopin competition. Were you able to take on something like the Ravel G major during those years? I don't know if it's a competition piece or not, um, but when did, you, when did you take this concerto on as one of the pieces you wanted to add to your repertoire? Um, actually, I'm very familiar with French music in general because I studied in Paris for four years. And um, this Ravel concerto in G, uh, first time I played was in Seoul and uh, with Seoul Philharmonic when I was 15 years old in 2009 with Myung Hun Chung, Korean conductor. So, and I've been playing this concerto so many times since then. and. It is just fun to play with the orchestra and there's like continuous dialogue between the piano and the orchestra. And um, the second movement it is so beautiful and lonely. So I can say this is one of my favorite concertos. Yeah, and I'm fascinated that you were, you were playing it when you were that young and then you went to Paris to study. Did moving to Paris kind of give you an extra angle, extra perspective on this piece that you hadn't had before? Well, maybe a long time ago, there was kind of like piano school existing, like Russian piano school or French piano school, but I don't think not anymore. Maybe there is, but like what I learned from Paris is not about the French piano school. It was about the French culture, so I feel like I just learned something unconsciously uh, so, like, French spirit kind of thing, I think I could observe very unconsciously when I was in Paris. Right. That makes a lot of sense that you just, you soak up the surroundings and that kind of makes its way into everything that you do in music, I suppose. So, tell me, um, when, you, when you learned of the opportunity to come to Boston to play this particular music, what, what went through your mind about playing Ravel with the Boston Symphony? I know that Boston Symphony has a very um, great uh, tradition about the French repertoire. And I just finished our first rehearsal and I was so impressed <laughs> by their playing. I think um, I've never experienced this kind of smooth rehearsal before. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure they know the piece and uh, it is in their blood. I could feel that. So it was so so easy to play with them and so enjoyable. Listening to this very first rehearsal, I have to share with you my own impression, which is that there was like an electric bolt that went through the, you and the orchestra. There was so much energy on the stage. And so uh, hearing you describe it as smooth and uh, fluid, um, that goes along with this energy. Did you feel that kind of energy as well? Oh, oh yes, oh yes. The, it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's terrific. Tell me a little bit about your most recent recording that you've released, Handel. It's, it's so different from Ravel. And of course, you, you recorded this months and months ago, but you were just here in Boston, uh, what was it, four months ago, five months ago, to play a recital that involved Handel and the Brahms Handel variations. Tell me how different it is to play 
the Handel suites that you recorded compared to this Ravel piano concerto? It is totally different language. It's like <laughs> it's explaining about the difference between German and French <laughs> language. Yeah. They're, they're totally different. Perhaps Spanish and Italian, they're a little bit similar, but French and German, they're totally different. And yeah, I was interested in Baroque music, so I decided to record and play this Handel because not so many people play this music on modern piano these days. But I discovered this piece during the pandemic and immediately I felt like, oh, I just want to play this piece. It is an interesting choice because I, I would you know, sort of expect for a lot of people that when they go into Baroque music as a pianist, maybe they'll try Bach first. But you chose Handel, not that, I mean, it's great music as well. Um, tell me about the, the, whether that was even a factor in your decision to do Handel for this recording instead of Bach. If I'm being honest, um, I, I felt like I was not ready to play Bach yet. I admire and respect Bach, and uh, it's so different from Handel, even though they're both like German <laughs> composers, but um, Handel's music is more melodic, um, and, and there's an emotional landscape, but while Bach is more intellectual and more, uh, more complex. So for me, as a Bach music beginner, Handel's music was more easy to follow and understand because I've been playing so much of uh, romantic and classical repertoire and as well the 20th century music. And Baroque was so new to me and Handel was quite easy, easier to follow. And of course, I love to, I love to explore more of Bach in the future, but I just wanted to start with Handel. What did you do with this recording um, in order to play Handel, how did it, how did you adjust your playing on the modern piano to play this music compared to those, as you say, these other romantic and classical pieces that you've been doing with orchestras and recitals? Well, I did a lot of experiments when I prepare for this program and then um, I decided to, I decided not to use the pedal when I play this music and because it is easier for me to make uh, make the sound that I want to produce, and the, the articulation and the phrasing is so different from the romantic repertoire. So it was very demanding, and um, it was a big journey for me. Yeah, I, I imagine that when you are playing the way that you always have using the pedal to get, get certain effects to sustain notes in ways that suddenly if you decide you're not going to, there's a whole new set of questions that comes up for almost everything you're doing in these pieces by Handel. Right. But for me, when I used the pedal, um, when I played the baroque music, it became even more difficult because I just wanted to produce the sound which is a little bit more clear and um, I just wanted to hear all the voices. All the voices were very important, and um, I just wanted to show and play them <laughs> as clear as possible. Last summer, you came to Tanglewood for the very first time, and we're very delighted that you'll be there again this summer. Tell me what your impression was of Tanglewood and the Kusevitsky Music Shed playing in that space when you did Brahms last summer. Uh, it was a great, great experience, great time. So beautiful landscape, fresh air. Just one problem, one issue was I played in the afternoon and it was so hot. <laughs> it was a hot <laughs> I, summer, yes. And I had to play Brahms Second Concerto, which is not uh, like a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It, <laughs> nobody thinks of the Brahms second as a, as a, as a, as a walk in the park, so to speak. But, um, but yes, tell me about your choice of, of Mozart's Piano Concerto Number no. 9 to perform this summer with Susanna Melki. Um, what, what is it about that piece that made you want to bring it to Tanglewood? Um, I'll be playing this concerto in somewhere in Salzburg and also in Korea. 
and I'm learning it now and I'm always astonished by this piece because Mozart was even younger than me, much younger than me and he, he was able to compose this kind of great art, especially for me. Um, everyone says like the second movement is the g is genius, but for me the last movement is genius. Of course, second movement is so beautiful and uh, it's, it's so like, how can I say, it's so deep. But the last movement in, in the middle part, um, it is kind of like saying goodbye or some kind of thing. Um, it is in major key, but it is so sad. I don't know how he composed it like this way, but maybe that's why he's a genius. That's fantastic, yeah. I love that perception of the piece. That's really wonderful. Song Jin Cho, it's really, really nice to talk with you, nice to meet you. Lovely to hear you here in Symphony Hall playing Ravel with the BSO. So thank you for a little bit of your time today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.